Hello, I'm Panos Kotzathanasis and this is Bad Accent Video Reviews. Today we are going to speak about Exhuma, the latest uh, Korean blockbuster. Uh, the film had its world premiere on February 16, 2024 in the Berlin International Film Festival and is currently screening in uh, US cinemas courtesy of uh, WellGo USA. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that at this point uh, it is the highest grossing film among the South Korean films released in 224. So, yes, definitely a blockbuster. But, uh, okay, before we go, before we start speaking about the story of the movie, let's first check the trailer. Oh, いや、ハルモニーが自分で。いい国で、ちょっと대살구슬해보죠유세차이미한기가엄청나네아이 뭐가 나왔다고 거기서 겁나 험한 게. Okay. As you can understand, it definitely looks impressive and uh, the trailer is not lying in this case. It's actually a very impressive visual film. Uh, regarding the story, which I will read from the official synopsis, uh, we have uh, when a renowned Saman and her protege are hired by a wealthy enigmatic family, they begin investigating the cause of disturbing supernatural illness that affects only the firstborn children of its generation. With the help of a knowledgeable mortician and the country's most revered geomancer, they soon trace the affliction's origin to a long-hidden family grave located on sacred ground. Sensing an ominous aura surrounding the burial site, the team opts to exhume and relocate the ancestral remains immediately. But as something much darker emerges, they soon discover what befalls those who dare to mess with their own grave. Okay, a number of things. I guess the first, the first element that anyone would notice on the film is the great casting. Okay, we have uh, Choi Min Sik in the role of the Geomancer, who is impressive once more, although in a role that I didn't feel that was that demanding. He has definitely played more demanding roles, but he still manages to sign his star quality and his charisma are evident in whatever he is doing and also here because i think Choi min sik is probably the best actor of his generation and maybe even one could say the best actor working in korea right now at least top three let's say uh, in the role of the of the woman summon we have uh, kim go Eun, who is also very impressive uh, I think her role is the most demanding in the film, both uh, in terms of acting and also both in terms of how she presents the character, but also because she has to dance and do a lot of things that the others don't have to. And uh, she's really outstanding to watch, uh, particularly in the... There are a couple of uh, scenes where... Uh, okay, there are some rituals happening and she's 
she, she's impressive to watch. She, she's very good in those. These are probably the scenes that people will most remember because apart from her showing her talent, they are also violent and in general shocking, very, very, very impactful. Uh, Yuhai Jin plays the mortician, the geomancer's friend, and this here, his role moves somewhere beyond between the dramatic and the comedic, with essentially him being the one who provides a comedic relief to the whole thing, which is not very comedic, not comedic at all. This is dramatic and moves to horror thriller parts. I think horror is the most uh, the most crucial element in the whole movie. And uh, lastly, we have uh, Lee dong Hyun, uh, who plays Bong Gil, who is uh, the protege of the woman Saman. Okay, he his role is a bit uh, lower in a lower level than the rest, but he still manages to be pretty good. Uh, he plays sometimes he's the victim, sometimes he is one of the he is the hero. He's good looking, so I think uh, his presence is definitely a plus for the whole movie. And uh, in general, the chemistry of the actors is also very good uh, because uh, for a number of reasons, both, be both because the acting is good, but also this class, let's say, between uh, the old and the new generation, which they start, they don't exactly trust each other, but uh, they come together to work against a common threat and this whole combination uh, works quite well. So... Uh, as you can understand, we have uh, we have exorcism, which uh, a number of exorcism actually, which has become one of the one of the favorite elements of Korean mainstream films, particularly after the Wailing. And uh, I dare say that uh, particularly the first, the double one uh, that happens in the beginning, is on par with the ones we saw in the Wailing. So the quality here is definitely on top. Uh, we have a lot of things about, okay, we have ghosts, we have uh, graves, and we have uh, coffins that all play a significant role in this evidently supernatural story. But uh, apart from the horror and uh, the thriller parts, it's also checking a bit if there is something behind all this, maybe a metaphor. And as in the wailing, okay, this is definitely not on the level of wailing in terms of context, but one can also find some messages here. Uh, for example, what's happening with the grave could be perceived as a uh, reference to the Bodolig massacre, which was, uh, okay, I'm going to read again, which was a massacre and the war crime against communist and alleged communist sympathizers, uh, many of which were civilians who had no connection to communist or communists that occurred in the summer of 1950 during the Korean War. Estimates of the death toll vary. Historians and experts on the Korean War estimate that between 60,000 and 200,000 people were killed. And uh, the massacre was committed by the government forces of President Syngman Rhee and falsely blamed on the communists led by North Korean leader Kim Il-sung. Okay, uh, this is indicative, I would say, for this part of uh, Korean uh, history. And uh, I feel that maybe what we are seeing here makes a reference to that event, although it's not very clear since uh, the enemy once more, as it happens very frequently lately, are the Japanese, which I feel now is not exactly a high point in the relationships between the two countries and uh, probably this aspect was implemented in order to draw audience and become more popular which is what the film aims at uh, significantly the director of the movie is uh, Zhang Jai Hyun who seems to follow these types of movies almost exclusively in his career. The first one was The Priests and uh, the second one was uh, Svaha. And now he continues in a supernatural horror thriller style. I have to say with a relative, uh, with, with success, I can say, considering that uh, the aim of the film is to entertain. I guess, yeah, in that regard, it is successful, although I'll, I still think that The Priests was probably better and uh, possibly his uh, best movie. 
In general, however, the way the story progresses with uh, the twists, uh, I think it works quite well. There, are, there is the shocking factor, there is violence, blood, there is fantasy, horror, and uh, in general, a lot of elements that uh, that could keep the audience on their toes. Okay, I think that, that sometimes he may have overused the jump scares, uh, which is right now the way the horror genre is progressing. It's more about atmosphere than specific moments. Uh, but uh, he uses a bit more than necessary the jump scares, although uh, as a whole, I guess the horror factor is quite good. You get somewhat scared in the movie, particularly if you watch it in cinema, I'm sure, with the, the special effects are impressive, both uh, in the visual and both in the visuals and the sound. And uh, I think in that regard, the film is definitely successful. Um, okay, some of the special effects, the visuals are not exactly great, particularly when some monsters appear, which I think could have been handled a bit uh, better. Uh, okay, the size seems to point towards uh, a Godzilla thing, but okay, much smaller, but it seems to have drawn from that part, but it doesn't work that well. Uh, but again, as a whole, that is a minor problem, and I think uh, in general the visual and the sound are on a very high level, as is the cinematography and uh, the editing also. The, the pace of the film is uh, quite fast, fittingly for such a movie, and uh, the twists are well placed within the narrative, although, okay, as usually in this type of Korean films, there is a turn towards the melodramatic close to the end that does not work that well, and are also some moments that uh, one could say that the story moves, uh, goes too far. Uh, okay, at 134 minutes, it's again on par with what we are seeing recently from uh, all mainstream cinema, essentially. Uh, but uh, I, I didn't feel that the film lasts too long. It's entertaining and uh, you definitely can pass the time uh, watching it. So as a whole, okay, this is definitely... Okay, it is not as good as The Wailing, but it's still good. And I feel that uh, fans of horror movies, thriller, supernatural, uh, that still want a bit of context, they will definitely have a blast with it. And uh, I would definitely suggest that everyone watches the film in cinemas because the technical aspect uh, definitely deserves to be witnessed in such a setting. So that was it. One more... Uh, but accent the video review came to its end. I hope you like. I hope you like the video. If you do, please uh, like and subscribe, and uh, we will see you soon again with more bad accents, as you can obviously see. Okay, bye. Have a nice evening.